Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Bible Story, Bishop and Betty. And there is Betty. Hi, Betty. I see you've got your glasses on. That's right. Can you see me better now? I cannot see you well. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, I can see you. And so we are getting ready. And what we're going to do, Betty is we're going to talk a man, about a man who was a really big wheel. What? Yeah. His name is Ezekiel. And I'm going to tell you all about Ezekiel and the wheels. Well, do you remember how we've been counting years when we're in the Old Testament? Do you remember how we do that? It's kind of like the counting backwards, remember? Because it's B.C. And, well, the prophet we're going to be looking at today is named Ezekiel. And he was born when there were lots of things going on in the Jewish world. In 622 B.C., the book of the law was found in Jerusalem. And when it was taken to King Josiah, he was so happy that he cried like a baby. He was really happy that the book was found. But he was also now able to read it very carefully, and when he read it very carefully, guess what he found out, Betty? What? His people were really, really bad. So he was happy he found the book, but he was really sad to see how his people didn't follow anything that was in the book. Well, just like it happens with everybody, Josiah died. In fact, he was killed by a pharaoh of Egypt named Necho. Yeah. Nico. Well, you know how those people are always fighting back and forth. So four years after Nico killed King Josiah, Pharaoh Nico was defeated by the king of Babylon, that man we've talked about before named Nebuchadnezzar. Let's go with that one because I think you have somebody in one of your grade schools probably by that name, right? Nebuchadnezzar. When we were watching your sister play soccer a few days ago, was was there anybody on the soccer field named Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. Uh, okay, I didn't think so. Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, well, you know what? It's tough in the first grade to have to spell that. So, anyway. Uh huh. Well, you know what? If you started spelling Nebuchadnezzar in the first grade, probably wouldn't get it finished until you were in the second grade. This is the alphabet to first grade. I think that's probably right. Yeah. And then you put a Nezer on the end, right? Put a Nezer on the end. So, what happened when Ezekiel, Betty, was 18 years old and King Nebuchadnezzar captured some princes and important people? He hauled them off from Judah to Babylon. We'll find out even more a little later on because a famous Bible person named Daniel and his three friends named Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael were some of the men who were captured. Now, Ezekiel was left behind. But for Ezekiel, life became complicated because by the time he was about 30 years old, he was eligible to become a priest, and most people, including him, figured out that he would be doing priestly things at the temple in Jerusalem. Life doesn't go the way people plan it, though, right? Well, you remember... That there were true prophets, remember that? And there were false prophets. And you may remember that the people in Judah only liked which prophets? The false prophets. Because the false prophets said, Oh, you're wonderful. Everything you do is good. Yeah, God's happy with everything you do. No matter how many bad things you do, it's okay. It's all right. Well... The problem is, for about 10 years, there was 
peace in Judah. So it looked like the false prophets were telling the truth. Remember, they didn't really like Jeremiah because he was telling the people God's truth, right? And it was not what the people of Judah wanted to hear, you see, because they loved their sinful lives and themselves. That's right. But then, in about 600 B.C., the new king of Judah named Jehoiakim started fighting Nebuchadnezzar. And when Jehoiakim died, a new king with almost the same last name, because his name was Jehoiakim, became the king of Judah. In about 597, Nebuchadnezzar came with his soldiers again and captured about 10,000 people and took them to Babylon. This was bad news, especially for the people who had been believing the false prophets since they kept on telling everyone that life was good and peaceful. Do you think that the 10,000 people and their families now believe these false prophets anymore? I don't think so. Just like living today, there were probably a few people who said, why didn't somebody tell us how bad things are in Jerusalem? Well, that's what happens when we don't listen to God. Now, some bad news. Ezekiel was one of the 10,000 captives who was taken to Babylon. So that means that he never was able to serve as a priest at the temple of Jerusalem. In fact, Ezekiel would never again see Jerusalem or the temple. That would be kind of like a man going to seminary, you know, preschool, and then being taken away before he could be ordained, before he could serve in a church. And you know why? Well, sir, you may remember that in 586, let's say his name again from the whole alphabet, Nebuchadnezzar, ready? Neb. You could never destroyed the city and the temple. He did. He destroyed the city and the temple. But just because Ezekiel would never see those two places with his eyes, God has other ways of showing things to us. So at the age of 30, Ezekiel was given a vision by God. So here's something I want you to remember and I'll explain it at the end of the chapter. You ready? Jehovah Shema. Go ahead, say it. Jehovah Shema. Well, that's right. I think you have a Galilean accent. So, in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel tells us in the fourth month of the fifth year, kind of like April the fifth for us, he received a vision from God while he was with the other exiles by the Kiba River. He points out that this vision came after the captives had been in exile for five years already. Ezekiel tells us that first he saw a windstorm coming. I want you to watch this with your, uh, your mind's eye, as they say. Think about this. A windstorm coming in from the north. But it was really amazing because there was a big cloud, lots of lightning, and a very, very bright light. What was really amazing was that in the very middle of that cloud, Betty, he saw four living creatures that had wings. In fact, he describes what they look like, and it's amazing. Here it goes. Faces, wings, shiny feet. He saw the face of a man. He saw the face of a lion. He saw the face of an ox, and he saw the face of an eagle. Now, yeah, I know it. Yep, he did, in fact. Well, God wanted him to see something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like a big cattle, you know, like a, an oxen. Oh, okay. Oh, they're, they're what's called a beast of burden. They use them to work in the field. But here's what's really amazing about this. One day I'm going to be explaining something to you in the New Testament. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to use those same faces. But this time, 
I'm going to show you how the church has used that over the years to mean the four gospel writers, the evangelists. Let's see if you can remember them. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, Ezekiel also saw a wheel on the ground beside each one of the creatures. We're told that the wheels all kind of came together. Every time one of the creatures would move, the wheels would move. In fact, Ezekiel tells us that every time a creature moved, he would hear their wings flapping. But high above all that, Ezekiel saw a man sitting on a throne with a big rainbow all around him. Ezekiel couldn't believe it, and he fell to the ground with his face on the ground. Then a loud voice came from the throne, and the voice said, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. Ezekiel then tells us that the Spirit entered him and lifted him up to his feet. Now that the voice had gotten Ezekiel's attention, I guess if you heard a voice like that, you'd, you'd listen, wouldn't you, Betty? Yeah. Well, Ezekiel was told what to do. Son of man, I'm sending you to those disobedient Israelites who never listened to me. The voice continued. This is what I, the Lord God, want you to do. Go and tell them what they are doing is wrong. And after a while, they'll figure out that you are a true prophet, Ezekiel. Well, the next thing that happened was that God then stretched out his hand and he told Ezekiel to open his mouth and to eat what God had in his hand. Sounds like he's going to get a meal, right? Well. It also sounds like you eat like you didn't wash your hands and you had dirt all in your hands and you had your mouth eaten. Well, you're not going to believe what it was because God has clean hands here and it was a scroll that was all rolled up, and when God unrolled it, it had important words on both sides. Then God looked at Ezekiel, and he said, Now, Ezekiel, eat the whole scroll. Eat the scroll. Huh? Yeah? Why can't he have, like, a chicken or a quail? Good question. But God wanted him to eat these words. And guess what happens? Ezekiel then ate all of that. It filled his belly. And then, he, you know what he said? He said, you know what? The word of God that was given to me tastes just like honey. Uh-huh. He says that God's words were that sweet to him. God also told Ezekiel that where he was sending him would mean that the people would understand his language but that they would not listen to God's word that Ezekiel would speak. God told Ezekiel that the Israelites were hard-headed people, but that God would make Ezekiel's head even harder than theirs. Well, Betty, the next thing that happened is that the Spirit lifted Ezekiel up and he heard many loud sounds. And he was lifted up, he was then dropped off, and even though he was happy about it, there he was at the Kibar River sitting for seven days trying to figure out everything that had just happened. Sometimes, I know, I don't understand, but the Word of God, well, that's because the Word of God, if you follow it, is the sweetest thing in the world. Yep. Well, he needed seven days to figure this out. I know, you shouldn't need paper, but well, I'm going to tell you something. Well, but these scrolls back then weren't really made out of paper. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? When you come over to Nana and Papa's house, I'm going to show you what real papyrus looks like. Papyrus? Papyrus. And that's because I have some from Egypt. And I'm going to show you what it would look like for words to be on a scroll of papyrus. Oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Well, Ezekiel needed seven days to figure out what was going on. And after seven days, God started giving Ezekiel some more direction. 
So the next thing you know, God sent Ezekiel out to a plain instead of a river, away from the river. And once again, Ezekiel was so overwhelmed by God and fell to the ground and had his face on the ground. And once again, the Spirit lifted him up. God told Ezekiel to go to his house and that the only time Ezekiel would speak was when God gave him the words to say. Otherwise, he told Ezekiel, your tongue is going to stick to the roof of your mouth. Doesn't work, does it? So what happened is, God then said, when I have something for you to say, then your tongue won't be stuck to the roof of your mouth anymore. So next God told him to take a clay tablet, which would be like getting a notepad today. That's right. And draw a picture of the city of Jerusalem on it. Then God even told Ezekiel what to draw on the tablet so that anyone who saw it would understand that everything that Ezekiel drew on there, that God had told him to draw on there, meant that bad times were coming. Bad things were going to happen. But God made Ezekiel feel all the pain that everyone felt when Jerusalem... Well, yeah, like that. There you go. And because of the, these people, there it is, see? There it is, Betty, just like that. And Ezekiel started feeling all of the pain of all the people who had committed all of the sins. And, in fact, God told him that he had to lie down with this drawing that he had drawn for 390 days. That's one day for every year that the Israelites have been disobedient. So Ezekiel had to bear the sins of Israel. Then he had to do it again for 40 days for the sins of Judah. God even gave him a shopping list and a recipe book on the food that he could eat. The Lord even told Ezekiel what to use for fuel. And that was pretty upsetting to hear, so I'm not going to tell you about it. You can go read about it. But after a little conversation with God, God told Ezekiel that to, he had to bake his bread over fuel. And Betty, do you know what the fuel was that he had to use? Uh, oil? Well, let's just say we call them cow patties. And the next time I see you, I will tell you more about cow patties. Because I have a hunch that some of the people on this call are chuckling right now because they know what cow patties are. And they're already thinking about what it would like to be to have to bake bread over cow patties. Yuck. I think I, think I'm, I, think I know what you're talking about. I think I, that you also know what I'm talking about. And Betty, you have figured it out. Well, I, I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. That must have been stinky bread. But the people in Jerusalem would have very little food during this time, so they were even willing to eat some stinky bread, I guess, because there was a famine going on. Well, that's true, and that would be nice if they could have had some chocolate or they could have had something out there that was better than that. I mean, after all, you know, carob grows on trees, too, and that kind of tastes like chocolate, carob, but apple, but guess what? No. Cow patties. Now, God had even more directions for Ezekiel. He told Ezekiel that he had to shave his head and his beard off so now he was a baldy, and to divide up all that hair and put it into three piles, and he even told him what to do with the hair. One third had to be burned, one third was to blow in the wind, and one third would be in the city, and Ezekiel would take his sword and push it around the city, and that he could keep a little tiny bit of his hair in his pocket. Well, things don't look too good for the people, I can tell you. And it was not a good time to think about food because 
There wasn't any, and there wouldn't be very much. Now, you may remember what we call it when there's very little food. Do you remember that word? Famine? Remember the word famine? Famine. No food. So, during this time, God gave Ezekiel many things to say to the people, and they were all warnings. Well, here's one of the things that God told Ezekiel to say to the people. Doom and gloom are here today. Violence is here. And you don't have anything of any value. Well, these aren't very cheery thoughts, are they, Betty? No. God kept on giving Ezekiel words and visions. And at one point, Ezekiel even saw the four living creatures again. He was excited to see them. He had missed them. Now, you're probably wondering how it is that Ezekiel was explaining to the disobedient people the bad things that would happen in Jerusalem if he wasn't there. Remember? Remember? God kept showing everything to Ezekiel, kind of like what happens when you have a dream about a place, and then when you wake up, you realize you weren't really there, but in your dream, it felt really, really real. Well, that's what was happening here when Ezekiel saw Jerusalem. Some of the elders even visited Ezekiel, but God did not give Ezekiel sweet words for the elders since most of them were guilty of doing really bad things, just like the rest of the people. Ezekiel shared God's word with the people of Israel and Judah, Betty, and also many other countries all around the world, parts of the world that we even can talk about today. They just have different names. These were difficult words that he gave them. And you can imagine that the people of all those places did not enjoy hearing them. Now, do you remember that odd name at the beginning of this chapter that I told you? Jehovah Shammah. Ready? Jehovah Shammah. Okay? Well, the Lord God sometimes is called Jehovah. Right. It's another name for God. Uh, the, the name that we can't really say out loud because it's very private. It's Yahweh. Yahweh. Okay. So, what it is, is Jehovah. Now, the Lord God sometimes, as I said, is called that. He took Ezekiel on many trips simply by showing him visions that were warnings to many people. The phrase Jehovah Shammah, well, it means God is there. And what God was showing Ezekiel is sometimes called the New Jerusalem. God then gave Ezekiel lots of information about how everything should be done in Jerusalem and in the temple. And he even talked about how all the tribes of Israel, remember there were 12 tribes of Israel, how all 12 tribes of Israel would one day be restored, which means that those 12 tribes of Jacob would have a better day. Now, you remember that Jacob had a name change. Remember, there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you remember that Jacob was later called Israel? Well, God told Ezekiel exactly what each tribe would get and what each tribe would need to do. And what will the city be called once all this happens? Aha! Uh -huh, you guessed it. Jehovah Shema. Shema. The Lord is there. I think that Ezekiel must have been tired once he told everyone everything that God had given him. So that honey tasting scroll that he ate must have sure given him a lot of energy, don't you think? Yeah, I know. So today, Betty, what you get to take away is eating a scroll that tastes like honey and, bake, and baking bread with cow patties. Well, I'll tell you what, Betty. When you come over next time and I cook something on the grill for you, I promise I won't use cow patties, okay? Please, just make this the steak, please. Do you use a different part of the cow? 
I promise, but maybe if I were you, even though you know I love you, how about looking inside the barbecue grill before I get started, okay? Okay. Love you, Betty, and I love hearing about Ezekiel. Have a great day. Say goodbye to all of our friends, and hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bye-bye.